Hey, what's up, print hustlers? Matt Marcotte here from Printavo. Today we're at Sound and Fury Print Shop. We've noticed in the comments a lot of questions about how do you get softer prints. So I wanted to go over a couple key components to help you create softer feeling screen prints. Let's go. First off, I'd like to start talking about ink selection. So different inks are gonna have different bodies, different feels, right? Cotton ink, blend ink, poly ink, you gotta really keep an eye on what you're trying to print. If you're printing on a cotton shirt, a cotton ink is going to be the thinnest and feel the best. Kind of a creamier body, gonna lay down the fibers nice but not have too much boardiness, right? You don't necessarily need to have stretch or other additives if you're working on traditional cotton. Now, outside of knowing which ink to use, you can also start to play with different ink uh, additives, right? So here we've got a couple additives that we use a lot here at Sound and Fury. We have a Spandisol, we also have a dulling paste and a curable reducer. Now, most of our inks are gonna have at least one, if not a few of these added to them. If we're talking about a softer print, I'm gonna really focus on a curable reducer. Taking your ink, adding curable reducer allows the body to drop. So the viscosity actually gets lowered. Gonna make it a little bit thinner, lay down thinner, less of a stack of ink, a lot softer of a hand to the print as well, okay? Now, outside of knowing which ink to choose, as well as starting to kind of play chemist with your inks, I also do recommend that you get the, the ink itself agitated. What do I mean by that? Don't like talk smack to it, right? I actually want you to use something like this. Now, there are much nicer versions of things like this. Uh, most ink manufacturers will recommend one. Uh, you can also talk to uh, m and Anatol, a couple of them have options too, where it's gonna take your ink and give a way to basically blend it continuously. m has got a turnabout, works great. Anatol's got the formulator, also works great. You can put gallons or five gallons on there. It's got a big arm that kind of goes into it and the, the gallon spins around. This is gonna be just a knockoff KitchenAid mixer that works great for a small manual shop like this. So inside here we have just our white ink and we've got the, the uh, dough agitator, right? We can go ahead and put this down and we put it down inside the ink and we can turn it on. It's gonna blend this white ink, constantly moving it. When you start to move it around, it gets a little bit warmer, not like hot, but the coldness goes away and it's being agitated. It's gonna also relax a little bit. If you're a screen printer, you already know what it's like putting cold ink into a screen versus 30 minutes later when it's starting to just get that perfect flow state just going right through. We can get ahead of that and make it flow by first agitating the ink. You might see at large, large print shops, they've got 55 gallon drums of their inks, right? Especially their white inks. And they're gonna have a pneumatic pump that pumps that ink out. That's also pulling it through and agitating it. So it's gonna work a lot better too. So this gives you the ability to get your ink to do the same thing the big shops are doing for a lot more money, right? A little bit different, cheaper version, but still gets you that nice flow ink into your screen. So again, ink selection, additives, as well as helping get your ink agitated and reduce it a bit. That's gonna go right into the next step to help you get softer and better prints. The next thing I wanna talk about is gonna be at your actual press. So your platens are gonna usually start off the day kind of cold, right? You wanna make sure that you're getting your platens warm. When you get your platens warm, it's going to permeate heat up through the shirt you're actually printing. So when you're nice, thin down, ready to print ink, goes and flows through, the heat's going to help relax that ink and keep that ink from building up an extra body in the screen, also allowing the ink to settle on nice and neat, right? That's why they recommend preheating your platens before you do a run. That will also help if you're in wet and wet printing, if you get warm enough platens to kind of help almost flash that ink when it hits on uh, from the, the garment itself, right? So we've got the ink choice, ink additives, and then we've got some, some little hacks on keeping your ink viscosity low and warming your platens. Now, we're talking about screen printing. So of course, I have to make sure we're talking about your screens. Let's go take a look. So we're here in the screen room, which is why it's yellow. And here we can see we've got all of our screens, 140 mesh, 180 mesh, and so on. What this means is that in a square inch, we've got 140 openings. Since it's a lower amount of openings versus a 180 or a 230, that does tell you the openings are larger. 
So the lower the mesh count, the larger the ink deposit's going to be, the more open area for the ink to flow. Now on a manual press, you gotta be careful going to too high because it's gonna be a little hard to push through. However, we still wanna find this sweet spot. 140 is the lowest that we use here at Sound and Fury because we're on a manual press. We don't like 110s because it's too heavy of a print. Now we'll have 110s or even 80 or 60 mesh for special effect needs, but for basic white ink, we're gonna usually never go below 140. A lot of times we'll even use our 180. So making sure that you're using the correct mesh count to cover your garment to get the appropriate print quality but not building up too much of a vertical stack of ink. You wanna have nice coverage, you don't need a vertical stack where it gets too thick. That also comes into play with how you're coating your screen. The emulsion between my fingers right now is going to be a different percentage. You wanna have a good emulsion over mesh percentage. If you're coating too thick, you might have too thick of a gasket, which then fills with too much ink, and when you actually drop that gasket down to your substrate, your shirt, you're leaving behind again too much of a vertical stack. So making sure you're properly coating your screen to encapsulate the knuckles and build the appropriate EOM percentage without building up too much of a gasket, leaving behind a heavy hand. Last but not least, another tip you can do if you're still worried about the hand of your print is you can heat press it at the end. So you can literally take your screen print, bring it over here. Uh, we put parchment paper or some sort of uh, Teflon sheet between the print and the hot plate, and you can go ahead and heat press that. That's gonna really reduce the feel and actually improve the stretch as well. So that can help reduce the hand or uh, the heaviness of the print. If you're on an automatic press, you really also wanna make sure you're taking advantage of things like inline rollers. Uh, there's even stampinators, which are gonna actually help heat press in line. All these things help lead to a softer print. Now, really last but not least, I wanna talk about the squeegee itself, right? Your squeegee rubber is gonna have a different durometer. Your durometer refers to how much pushback it's gonna have when you're using it in a flex state, right? So the higher the squeegee durometer, oftentimes the 90s, what we hear a lot of, that's going to be a firmer, sharper. It's going to flex less, which is going to shear more ink, less ink being deposited. The soft of the squeegee, like a 60 durometer, it's going to have more flex. It's going to build up a little bit more of an ink well and lay down a bit more. So definitely keep an eye on what durometer you're using as well as your angle, pressure, and speed to all help with a softer print. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Let us know how you keep your prints soft in the comments below. Reach out with any questions. Thanks, see you soon.